morning. Uh, I'm Lars Nilsson and I'm <clears throat> trying to introduce you to the field of what patients that might uh, benefit from uterine transplantation. It is a sort of guess uh, first, but you can also say they are the candidates for this and who may they be really and I try to guess who they might be and probably in 10 years time that proves to be wrong but uh, any time, that is what we think today at least. Uh, first of all uh, the malformations of the Miller and Ducks, miller rokitansky kustner hausers syndrome and also partial defects encountered in the syndrome or, or not. The terminology is a bit varied. Um, and um, this is a picture of the uterine factor infertility. To the left are those with no uterus at all. That's MRKH is of course uh, the milieu and duct agenesis. And also those who have been hysterectomized because of malignancy, fibromas, and also um, cancers, and obstetric bleeding usually with rupture and uh, a sort of emergency hysterectomy. On the right side we have those with a uterus that is not functioning usually by, because of intrauterine adhesions, radiation damage, some fibromas, some adenomyosis, and uh, the malformations, which not all of them are that deleterious for fertility, uh, may or may not increase the risk of uh, spontaneous abortion. There have been uh, attempts to calculate how many uh, patients it could be that would uh, be candidates for, for transplantation and uh, roughly 200,000 in Europe and in China we will with the same calculation say that it could be as much as 350,000 patients. These are some of the uh, situations. Uh, uh, to the left we have the definite things, the uh, MRKH or uh, of course after total hysterectomy there is no uterus at all or there is a small uh, compact structure or uh, more than one but there is no uh, functioning um, uterus at all. Uh, also complete adhesions are very difficult to get rid of. The others are more or less uh, united with, with uh, difficulties in fertility or uh, an increased spontaneous abortion frequency, but it's not a 100% thing. It's uh, lower risks, but some of them could be rather tricky. I, I remember to have delivered an IVF uh, pair of twins in uh, a unicorn with very small uterus from the beginning and it grew and they went almost to term so obviously this can happen and it's not an absolute factor of infertility. Um, also those that have removed the uterus because of malignant disease, severe endometriosis, severe infection, obstetric complications and accidentally in other surgery or trauma and it might be enough uh, if a big part of the uterus is removed. It doesn't have to be all of it. And loss of, uh, total loss of cervix is quite a difficult thing and with very low chances of getting pregnant. Uh, endometrial aplasia, damage to stem cells um, and what's called the Asherman syndrome, I think or originally it was a post-tuberculosis thing, but there are other reasons, as you all know. And more, more to speculate about uh, genetic males, either because they have an androgen insensitivity and uh, turn out as, as uh, 
typical women, but with a uh, male chromosome identity. And also gender identity disorders, they want sex change. You can speculate that maybe couples, homosexual couples, male, two males, might be interested in this, but that is rather speculative, of course. And others, well, has somebody any suggestion? Have I missed something? There are always people who want to be the first, so you never know, but probably that's not a, a really serious indication. First part ended then, because I'm having the second one as well, so I think we might have a, a minute or so for, for questions, otherwise I go on with the second part. No comments? This is of course a new thing if it's going to work. What are the alternatives? First of all, those that enable genetic parenthood. Very theoretically, uh, deliberate uh, making of an extra uterine pregnancy uh, because we all know that abdo an abdominal pregnancy can go more or less to full term but it's a very risky business and I don't think anybody would dare to do this uh, deliberately. Some kind of artificial uterus um, um, now comes other techniques with the cellularized um, organs that can be implanted in the body and uh, but that's it very much of uh, science fiction uh, for complete ectogenesis, ectogenesis and uh, as external artificial uterus that's uh, like Mr. Huxley's brave new world where uh, pregnancies came from the beginning and all, all through from up to term and also could be manipulated during that. It's a very funny story, so if you haven't read it, I think you should. The only one that's really existing today is surrogacy, and it will be covered in its ethical aspects rather soon. And of course, like it as it is, accept it, maybe adopt to solve uh, the need for a child. And uh, that concludes the end of my talk. Thank you.